Many fighters begin their UFC careers with very few blemishes on their records, if any at all. Over time, most fighters will accumulate wins and losses naturally, but usually if a fighter starts to take lots of damage, gets knocked out multiple times, or goes on a losing streak, that's an indication that they're nearing the end of their days as an MMA athlete. Their friends, family, coaches, and even the fans will begin to urge them to maybe hang up the gloves forever. It takes a special kind of human being to be able to overcome even one aspect of that negativity. Now, let me tell you about a fighter who overcame not only being brutally stopped twice in a row, but also reinvented his entire style, much to the surprise of even hardcore fans. Not only was this man able to come back from the jaws of an early retirement, he was able to reinstate himself as one of the most terrifying men in the lightweight division. Let me tell you about Justin Gaethje. I'm literally going to try to take this man's life. And if yes, you're not, I and want if, to die. And, and if you're not ready, and if you're not ready to die, don't show I up. I am ready I'm to die. Right now, the shit Justin had a perfect entrance to the UFC if there ever was one. He was signed to the promotion in 2017 with an unblemished record of 16 and 0, and was quickly introduced to the fans worldwide at the UFC summer kickoff press conference. Justin was the self-proclaimed most violent lightweight in the world, and the fact that he was the former World Series of Fighting undefeated champion backed up that statement. His extremely unique style of taking massive amounts of damage, surviving, and then dishing out even more against his opponent was almost unheard of in the top tier of MMA, let alone from an undefeated fighter. He made his debut against top 5 lightweight Michael Johnson at the Ultimate Fighter 25 finale, as the main event of course. After a grueling, exhausting back and forth battle in which Justin was rocked twice, the highlight was able to finish Johnson via strikes in the second round. Justin even pulled off his signature backflip off the cage. Justin received Fight of the Night bonus, a Performance of the Night bonus, and later was awarded Fight of the Year for his efforts. In my book, this was the greatest UFC debut of all time, based on these circumstances. This set the precedent that if you weren't a fan of Gaethje, you weren't a fan of MMA. At this point in his career and life, despite being 17-0, Justin was still a very raw fighter. His style of taking punishment seemingly on purpose drew skepticism from the fans and certainly from other fighters. Justin even stated himself that with his style, it was only a matter of time before he was knocked out in the UFC. His tenacity inside of the octagon was parallel with his tenacity outside of it. He proclaimed that he was willing to die in the octagon, and during a media day face-off with Johnson, when accused of being nervous, he said, I'm not nervous, I just want to kill you. Hit him. With most fighters, these statements wouldn't be taken seriously, but with Justin, you almost had to believe him. He truly seemed to be a man who would live by the sword and die by the sword. Unfortunately for Gaethje, his death by the sword came late in the same year as his flawless debut. After coaching the Ultimate Fighter alongside Eddie Alvarez, which by the way was another testament to how quickly his popularity grew, Justin met the underground king at UFC 218, and after two and a half rounds of brutality and chaos, Justin was stopped by a single knee to the chin. A half-delirious, freshly KO'd Gaethje repeatedly asked Herb Dean if he could, quote, start again. Even after being knocked out in front of the entire world, Justin's true warrior nature was still on full display. Of course, this earned fight of the night as well. A single loss for Gaethje wasn't perceived as bad at this point. After all, he did predict his own KO loss, right? I'm assuming Justin felt the same way because between his chaotic fight with Alvarez and his next fight with Dustin Poirier, there was virtually no reinvention of his skill set or fighting style. Justin is a D1 All-American wrestler, yet he never uses his wrestling skills in the cage. His style originally consisted of an immensely high output of heavy hooks and devastating leg kicks. The problem with how Justin fought was that he could just throw strikes for the sake of throwing them. He wouldn't set up anything with feints and there was virtually no head movement. His intense pressure and raw power had earned him all of his success up to this point, so again, it's easy to see why he didn't feel a change was necessary. Even the fans were still high on Justin at this point. The problem with the Eddie fight was originally just seen as a cardio issue. Justin got tired and Eddie was less tired. Simple, right? Well, close, but not exactly. Looking back, it's easy to see that the fight was purely a game plan and stylistic error from Gaethje. With pacing and better placed and set up hooks, I believe Alvarez would have been no problem for him. Even with the reckless damage absorbing style, Justin still badly damaged Eddie's face and very well could have won that fight even then. Where the real problem started for Justin Gaethje were during and after the fight against Dustin Poirier that I mentioned earlier. 
After only about four months off, which is insanity when you're talking about the massive amounts of damage this man eats, let alone after a KO loss as well, Justin main evented against Poirier in his home state of Arizona. The fight was very close for the first three rounds. Justin was tearing up Poirier's leg with his signature kicks, and both fighters were landing flush punches. However, very early into the fourth round, Gaethje was hit with punches that rocked him, and he just couldn't recover before Dustin put him down for good. This result was absolutely heartbreaking for Gaethje. Of course, this one fight of the night, but this was his second KO loss in a row, and this time it was in his home state as well. At this point, the glaring holes in Gaethje's game were fully laid out for the entire world to see. Take him into deep water, and his large output of strikes will eventually cost him his gas tank, and shortly after that, his chin. This is the point that the fans and other fighters completely lost hope in Justin ever reaching the top. Retirement was brought up pretty much the day after this loss. To be fair, two knockout losses in a row is always gruesome to see happen to a young man, and when you couple this with the constant damage he took throughout his entire career, I have to admit it did look pretty bad. The world accepted that Justin was just a flash in the pan, maybe he was just a hype train. Maybe years of using a reckless and extremely damaging style finally caught up with him. It certainly didn't look promising. What happened next is what I like to call the reanimation of Justin Gaethje. He was knocked out twice in a row, which is the closest you can come to being dead in a sporting event. Not only that, he was seen as dead by the media and fans. Metaphorically, Justin was deceased at this point. However, using his raw alpha male power and natural born killer instinct, Gaethje was able to come back from his death like a zombie. And what do zombies eat? James Vick would find this out the hard way in August of 2018. Justin main evented once again against Vick, who was 13-1 and one at the time. Justin was the underdog for the first time since his debut. In the lead up to the fight, James talked ample amounts of trash about Justin's fighting style. I fought four times in the last year and I won my fights. You, you lost two out of three. You fucking suck, dude. He called Justin the Homer Simpson of MMA, stating that he was punch drunk and on his way out of the UFC forever. I'm not, uh, I'm not the Homer Simpson of, uh, of MMA like you are, bro. I'm not going to take a beating, but you will get knocked the fuck out. You take, you take 10 significant strikes per minute. That's 50 shots around. That you're, you ain't lasting, you ain't lasting three rounds of me taking all that beating like that. I'm not sure if it was these comments that inspired Justin to train differently, but during the actual fight, Justin showed extreme composure. He stayed in Vic's face, yet avoided getting to a wild brawl like usual, and he quickly landed a well-placed and educated, if you will, right hook that instantly flatlined Vic. We were finally able to see the highlight backflip off the cage once more. James was so out of it that five minutes after being knocked out cold, he was still trying to shoot takedowns on Justin. It was scary and it earned Justin another 50k bonus. I can honestly say that Justin's reanimated right hand ended Vic's MMA career. Next, this reanimated Gaethje fought Edson Barboza in the main event of UFC on ESPN2. Edson had often been called the best striker in the lightweight division due to his finishing ability and brutal leg kicks. But after a brief leg kick battle in the opening of the first round, Barboza also fell victim to a single right hand from Gaethje. He was out the coldest he'd ever been out, and Justin got another bonus for his performance. At this point, the Justin hype was starting to pick back up. People were able to see the reanimation, but there were still skeptics who needed a little convincing. Cerrone takes an in. He's oh, taking he's more bad. punishment. He's hurt bad. Gaethje it's has over. him down. It's over. Justin oh, Gaethje. My by first that round. ref almost lost his life. After dispatching fan favorite and legend Donald Cowboy Cerrone in the first round, Justin had finally made it back to the top of the division, leaving three bodies and performance bonuses in his wake. Not only was he more terrifying than before, he was seemingly more angry and ready to kill for what he thinks he deserves. Justin Gaethje might be the most unique fighter in MMA history. His personality is the epitome of killer instinct. He completely changed styles right in the prime of his career purely for the sake of causing more pain and knockouts by extending his own longevity. He was able to reanimate himself from a victim of two knockout losses into a frightening force knocking on the door of a title shot later this year. He is the most violent lightweight on the planet. You know, after those two losses, I really was able to, to look in the mirror. You know, before that, I was undefeated, and you know, I just really couldn't take the time to to make the changes because you know I didn't know what was what was wrong you know I was just having so much success but um you know now to my ability to slow things down is is so amazing um I didn't know I could do it I didn't know I, I possessed that skill 